I was just thinking. I've got my homework done. Here's my best friend. Here's my girlfriend. I've got tuna salad sandwiches for lunch. My cup runs over. What cup? Oh, it was just a thing I memorized in English 1A. It means I've got it made. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Tommy Quaid. Anyone? Douglas? Um, Cobalt, 58.94. Right. Radium, 226.05. Right. Mildred? Strontium, 22.997. Correct. And that brings me to an important announcement. to listen, Miss Stone? <laughs> Thank you. You know, many teachers think it's high time outstanding students receive the same recognition as overgrown halfbacks. All across the country, the best schools are starting to award scholarship letters, like athletic letters. Well, last night, I persuaded our school board to grant a Bryant Park B sweater for an annual scholarship award. I hope it'll come to be regarded as an honor, and worn with pride. I'm sure you all realize that we have two outstanding science scholars in this class. And our candidates for the B are Mildred Harper and Robbie Douglas. Look, I'll see you later, huh, Rob? Oh, hi, guys. What are you eggheads trying to do? Make it tough for us normal guys? Same recognition as overgrown halfbacks? Oh, brother. Well, it wasn't my fault. It could happen to anybody. Boy, I'm really doing rotten in civics. It's an elastic sweater. It's probably a little cashmere number with a fur collar and beads. <laughs> Let's see your notebook. Oh, come on, man. Go off for one one, Burroughs. Come on, man. Son of a gun. Incomplete pass. Bobby, what happened? My cup just sprung a leak. <laughs> George Armstrong, Bryant Park High School science teacher, today announced a school sweater award for scholastic achievement. Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah, great. According to Armstrong, the race for the coveted bee is between Mildred Harper, daughter of Fred and Dr. Marion Harper, and Robert Douglas, son of Stephen Douglas. Hey, that's wonderful, Rob. Hey, Bob. Yeah? <laughs> hey, I'm glad I've got one egghead in the family, especially in science. Dad, do you have to use that word? <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob. Hey, Bob, look here. Rob got his name in the paper. What kind of a jam is he in now? <laughs> oh, the worst. What do you mean, the worst? I'm really proud of you, Rob. You know, I knew Robbie was smart, but I didn't think he was that smart. <laughs> I could have told you. He knows 321 ways to get out of doing work around here. Why couldn't I have stayed stupid and happy? I'm glad you didn't, Rob. There you go, Chip. Bob ought to have his name in the paper for ham hocks. <laughs> You're right, Chipper. Oh, I don't know. Well... Mike, I was reading this morning that uh, Trowbridge ran the half mile in 155 flat last week. And Keeler's made it in 154.5. Mm. Well, it's going to be a rough one, all right. The winner's going to have to break 154. Dad, how am I going to show my face at school tomorrow? Yeah, Elroy McManus got three A's in a row in arithmetic. He burned his pants up so he wouldn't have to go to school. <laughs> What's wrong with you fellas? You talk as if it were a disgrace to get good grades. I'll get it. Bobby says he'd bring back the book I borrowed from him. No. What did he say? It's a book on Cub Scouts. Chip is borrowing it back. Dad, don't you understand the spot I'm in? Yes. But let me tell you something. You'd be in a worse spot if you came home with bad grades. Dad, you use the word yourself. I I'm an egghead. All right. So you're a good science student. What's wrong with that? I was a good science student. I Dad... I think I know what Robbie's going through. Mr. Armstrong put the finger on him. If he wins that award, he'll be different from the others, and that's bad. It makes him a, a maverick to the rest of the herd. Yeah, and the herd is kicking me out. 
Oh, hi, Hank. Hi, Mr. Douglas. Hi, Hank. Now, look, Hank, we'll have no water skiing in my kitchen until after the dishes are done. I'm bringing them back to Rob. Oh. Well, goodbye, Mr. Douglas. It's been nice knowing you. Well, goodbye, Hank. Are you uh, leaving town or something? Oh, no, sir. It's just that I don't think I'll be coming around here for a while. What's the matter? Have we got chicken pox or something? <laughs> my father read about Robbie being up for the scholastic letter. Well, he was impressed, wasn't he? Yes, sir, he sure was. No more water skiing, no more bowling, no more nothing. Not until I get my marks up. Oh, I get the blame even from my best friend. Well, you're still my best friend, Rob. But you know how the guys feel. Well, I'm just one of the guys. Well, Robbie, it looks like your best friend turned out to be a six-foot-three chicken. <laughs> We're all proud of you, Rob. Thanks. Dad, I don't want any more dinner. May I be excused, please? Certainly, Rob. Robbie, why don't you take Betty to the movies on me, huh? Okay. Thanks, Dad. Maybe I can convince her that I'm sort of dumb once you really get to know me. <laughs> Betty's father found out about the Scholastic Award. Good night. Good night, Rob. Good night. Good night. I still cannot believe it's a crime to get good grades. Hank, who are you going to eat with? Well, I, I kind of promised the guy. Yeah, I'll see you, huh? Hello, Robbie. Hello. Hey, the better student win the award. Good luck. You get my vote. I gather you're having a rough time with the masses. Yeah, they're kicking me out of the herd. Bobby, wouldn't you rather be an egghead than a dumbhead? No, ma'am. Bobby, why don't you call me Mildred? I think we ought to be friends. We have so much in common. Yeah, how about that? Well, perhaps we should join up, go places. Like where? Well, the Budapest Quartet is coming to the auditorium. What kind of stuff do they sing? <laughs> It's a string quartet. They play chamber music. Hey, that was a pretty dumb question. You know, maybe there's some hope for me yet. <laughs> When's the bash? Saturday afternoon. Well, um, I'll let you know. Well, after the Budapest, the Ballet Russe is coming. They'll dance in Nutcracker Suite. Oh, boy, that ought to be a real dilly. If you'd only give your brain a chance, you'd adore the ballet. I didn't give my brain a chance. And here I am, with all my friends. In the Prestone Zone. Jazz it up with Santa Rans. <laughs> All right, class. Give me the total number of atoms of nitrogen represented by the formula 3MH4 minus NO3. Douglas? Nine atoms. Nine. You understand the question, Douglas? Well, yes, sir. Well, did you happen to do your assigned reading last night? Uh, no, sir. I, I guess I got to horsing around too much and I didn't have enough time. I see. Anyone else care to answer? Miss Harper? Six nitrogen atoms. Correct. Sure, dear. Sit down. Well, you sure you don't have a patient coming in? You said it was important, so it's important. Mom, it's about Robbie Douglas. His father is the engineer, isn't he? Stephen Douglas. Well, you and Dad met him at the PTA. Oh, yes, I remember. It didn't seem odd to him that your mother was a psychiatrist. The father, like Mr. Douglas, you, you'd think Robbie would be proud of being a good student. And the two good students would find a lot in common. Mom, he's trying to lose the award just to hang on to stupid Betty Stone. A equals Robbie, B equals you, and C equals Betty Stone. 
Now, our problem is A plus B minus C. <laughs> Sally, will you clear my desk for the afternoon? I'm going out with my daughter. Oh, Mom, what can we do? You won't find the answer in the library or a laboratory. I think we will. Darling, you have finally reached the stage where the best laboratory is a beauty parlor. Come on. Hi. Hello, Robbie. Did you want to see me? Yes. Well, may I come in? Sure. Oh, was it anything in particular? Yes. Well, shall we sit somewhere and talk? Okay. I stayed after class today. I told Mr. Armstrong you're trying to lose the award. Well, now, why'd you do that? You could have won it and we would have both come out ahead. Oh, but I don't want to win it that way. But if I win, I lose. All you lose is Betty Stone. Well, now, isn't that the truth? Mildred, you just don't understand. Maybe I do. When a guy gets to be 16, he forgets about collecting stamps and making model airplanes. He wants to settle down with a neat girl that's, well, that's feminine, sort of. I know. I've been busy forgetting about dolls and hopscotch myself. Yeah, but you've got your mother and father. You can all sit around and talk to each other and think and stuff. Maybe I'm starting to think about boys. Okay. Well, anyway, Robbie, please don't lose the award. Not this way. Well, let's put it another way. I'm not going to try and win it. Well, you've got to do your best. I figured out a way to lose. I'm going to get Bub to help me with my homework. Promise me you won't. I'm not going to promise a thing. Is there anything else? Are you uh, wearing perfume or, or, or shaving lotion or something? It's perfume. It's called Wake Up, Sweet Prince. It's, uh, it's kind of like cocoa butter, only without the uh, chocolate smell. My mother thought you'd like it. Have you been uh, fooling around with your hair, too? Yes, at the beauty shop. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> where'd you get a, a dress that's, uh, that's built like that? Parsons, 1495. Well, you, you sure don't look much like an egghead. Neither do you. Goodbye, Robbie. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, do you uh, really think that I should go all out for that award? Yes. And uh, show up, even if I win? I'd be proud of you. <laughs> Wake up, sweet prince. How about that? <laughs> well, it's too bad a thing like this could become a problem, Dr. Harper. But it'll all be over in a few days. Either Mildred or Robbie will win the award, and then the whole thing will be forgotten. And the effort to impress the students that scholarship is a good thing will have gone for nothing. Unfortunately. But it's uh, nothing new to treat a good student as a freak, I guess. I remember we had a fellow named Bruce Mitchell in my class in high school. He was tall, skinny, horn-rimmed glasses, high forehead, fine student. Everybody called him Brainy Brucey. <laughs> I know, every class had one. We had shy, skinny little Marion. Me. I hear she turned out to be a pretty fair psychiatrist. Mr. Douglas, did you know that Robbie is purposely giving wrong answers so he'll lose the award? Robbie is? Well, that's like throwing a game, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, it seems to me that three adults, a psychiatrist, her nuclear physicist husband, and an aeronautical engineer, ought to be able to outwit a class of high school students. Okay. Problem number one, how to convince Robbie and his fellow students that education is not for the birds. <laughs>
Exercise is great, Bob. 866. This is the day. Big deal. I never thought he'd have the nerve to show up. What did he win? Well, one thing you can say for Rob, he's not a chicken. Ooh. Students, I know how many of you feel about the scholarship award, but in time you'll come to realize its importance, both to our country and to yourselves as individuals. I've learned that your parents feel very strongly about this, and they've persuaded someone you all know to make the award. That's all we need, the boy's vice principal. May I introduce Brigadier General Jimmy Stewart. Holy cow, Jimmy Stewart. That's right. Our guest is Jimmy Stewart. And he is a Brigadier General in the United States Air Force Reserve. He's just completing a tour of active duty in the Air Force and is returning to the West Coast. Students, General Stewart. Mr. Armstrong, students, good afternoon. Uh, some of you seem surprised to see me here. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I was surprised, too, when Dr. Harbour told me the students were going to honor an egghead. And the reason for that is because when I was in high school, that word described a fellow who goofed up. I wish you could have been with me these past few days up in the mountains near Colorado Springs. I visited a school dedicated to developing what perhaps could be called super eggheads. You'd have enjoyed seeing 2,500 youngsters, just a couple of years older than you, competing in various athletics, football, basketball, fencing, wrestling, and each a modern egghead in his own right, because academic leadership is a mandatory requirement for admission to that school. Now, maybe by this time you've guessed that I'm talking about the United States Air Force Academy, where the program is devoted to developing leadership. Now, I don't mean only military leaders to plan air tactics. I mean leaders in science and diplomacy, astronautics, electronics, physics, the humanities, leaders in tomorrow's world. One of the most important things they learn is inscribed on a statue that stands amid the rolling hills, and it reads, Man's flight through life is sustained by the power of his knowledge. And it's so true. You're, you're growing up in the midst of a complex and wonderful world a world of science. So we, we take for granted our accomplishments in space, but this is only the beginning of the space age and the marvels of automation in our everyday lives. Progress in the future depends on knowledge, on education. Now this group and other students across the country, around the world, are in a sense competitors in this quest for knowledge. And I think the winner of any competition is not just average. He's earned his victory and the right to recognition. And I'm glad the students and faculty of this high school have decided to recognize with an appropriate award a winner in academic achievement. It's an important award and I believe in it. And I'm proud to present it. The first award for scholarship a sweater and Brian Park B to Robert Douglas. Thank you, Thomas.
that way. Thank you very much, sir. For dinner, Mr. O'Casey. It's just lovely. You're welcome, my dear. And come back again soon. Oh, thank you. I'd love to. Well, you two are off to the ballet, huh? Yep, the ballet right. Ruth. Oh, yeah, Ruth. They're dancing the Nutcracker. Oh. But it was part of the deal. I promised next week to go to the Jazz Bash. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it'd be okay to wear the sweater to the ballet. You better wear it, Ralph. Well, you could wear it anywhere. Well, uh, should we go, Mulder? Oh, fine, Robbie. Yeah. Well, good night. Mrs. McDermott that I've seen her husband and he looks more to me like a beagle. Not Mr. McDermott. Tell her and tell his husband. Can I have one of her puppies? One little word. No. I bummed it real neat and they smell brand new even. What do I care how they smell? Tramps smell brand new when we got them. Look at him now. He's like one great big round ball of dirty yarn. Yeah, but... And no yeah buts. And don't try bringing one of Tarantula's puppies over here to melt my heart, because it won't work. Her name's Tarantella, not Tarantula. Okay, Bob. Well, that was too easy. <laughs> and don't have Mrs. McDermott calling and working on your dad. When I say no more animals, I mean no more animals. <laughs> yeah, but where are we going to get a pig? Well, I'll give you one. You fatten him up, and we'll be partners on the profits. Well, how come? Well, look, I'm not trying to high-pressure you guys. <laughs> you both keep saying how broke you are. Well, farming's the only way I know how to make money. Well, it sure looks like you make plenty of profit. Oh, I'm 50-50 with my dad on this. I'm just trying to save up enough to haul myself through college. Boy, wouldn't it be great if we could build up one pig into a checking account? <laughs> well, why not? Hey, maybe you could even join our 4-H club. Uh, do you have time to ride out to the farm? Yeah, sure. Well, oh, let's go. And that's why I'm never going over to Sudsy Piper's house as long as I live. Or at least not this afternoon. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Hi, Mr. Quincy. Hi, Bob. Hey, Joe! Hush. I hate to say it, fellas, but that's the ugliest looking mud I ever saw. <laughs> mud? It's a genuine Duroc, bro. I don't care if it's an Airedale. <laughs> That's a pig. Yeah. What are you doing in the house with that animal? Oh, it's not going to be in the house all the time, Mr. O'Casey. Well, we're going to keep it in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> Whose backyard? Yours. My mother's kind of peculiar about animals. <laughs> oh, so it's Robbie's pig, is it? Boy, this is neater than him one of Tarantella's puppies. <laughs> now, who are you going to call? Sergey, wait till he hears we got this. Now, listen, Francis, you get that pork chop out of here. We're keeping three pigs now, and that's enough. <laughs> Left here, you're very welcome. Okay, sons, I'll be right over. Hi, Dad, look what we got. A pig? Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, ours, I presume. Well, Bubba will just make it sound like it's dumb to have a pig around the house, Dad. And I also think it's uh, dumb to keep giraffes in the house. <laughs> Hank and I are going into the pig business. We're going to fatten them up and make a lot of money. Oh, swell, a do-it-yourself stockyard. Well, Rob, the city's hardly the place to raise a pig. He's just a pig now, Dad, but wait till he's a hog. George Van Busick says that they're worth a lot of money. Steve, last month it was hamsters. And before that, field mice. I know that. Rob, are you really serious about this project? Yeah, Dad, honest. Hank and I are going to raise them in the backyard. We'll build a pen for them and everything. You know, Dad, it might not be too bad an idea. I hear those 4-H kids do pretty well for themselves. 
Thanks, Emily. I'll do something for you sometime. Bobby, you've started projects before and you've never finished one of them. I don't want that to happen again. Uh, it won't, Dad. This is the beginning of a, a great family fortune. Now, Steve, don't weaken. It's up to Robbie. I want his word that he'll accept full responsibility. Feed him properly, give him the care he needs, and not neglect him. I'll stick with this pig all the way, Dad. Hey, I'll bet there are laws about keeping the pig in the city. I uh, know there are, Mr. O'Casey. We already checked. Oh, yeah? Well, what about the noise? Remember that purple duck we bought for Chip one Easter? He had a mighty nasty quack. Well, the pigs don't make any noise, Bob. Well, they don't, huh? How about that oink? We'll go along with Rob one more time. You can keep the pig, Rob. Thanks, Dad. Well, you fellas better go out and start building a pen for him, huh? Okay. Come on, Hank. <laughs> Those are my sentiments, exactly. Boy, what a lucky pig. He never had it so good. You know, we can't keep calling this pig pig. We gotta give it a name. Yeah, some kind of fancy, you know, with snob appeal. Yeah. You know, most pig groups have English names. You know, like Yorkshire, Hampshire, Tamworth. How about uh, Shakespeare? Well, my mother said that most of Shakespeare's stuff was written by a fellow named Bacon. Bacon? Now, what could be a better pig name? <laughs> Too corny. Hey, how about Hamlet? You get it? Pig, ham, Hamlet? You don't have to spell it out for me, Robbie. I gotta see in basic comprehension, you know. <laughs> Well, he's a pig, isn't he? He's got to have some mud to slop around in. No, George Van Dusick says that's the old-fashioned way. A pig would rather be clean. Oh, okay. I think we ought to feed him. Yeah, let's get him some good garbage. No. The modern pig eats milk and lots of corn. So do I. Come on, let's go look in the refrigerator. Okay. Uh, how you doing, Bob? Good afternoon, Mr. O'Casey. What do you two poor custers want? <laughs> how about some milk? Help yourself. Oh, well, we'll need about a gallon. And, uh, Mr. O'Casey, where do you keep your corn? Is this for that fat friend of yours outside? <laughs> well, yeah, but we're going to eat some of it, too. Give me that. That pig is your problem. But, Bob, he's hungry. That's his problem. We settled for some nice, clean garbage, Mr. O'Casey. Not one lean banana skin. Get out. <laughs> pig cowboys. <laughs> What we need is, is some high-class leftovers. Hey, how about Betty's house? They ate pretty good over there. Yeah, her mother sets fires to pancakes and all kinds of fancy jazz. Yeah, well, let's go. We'll be right back, Hamlet. You'll have a dinner fit for a pig. <laughs> TiVo.com. Protected in the Prestone Zone. I've more natural approach. Prevent gas with Bino. officer. Is this the Douglas residence? That's right. I'm Stephen Douglas. Well, we have a complaint. A complaint? Uh, about what? Well, Mrs. Carlson called something about a pig. Pig? I've uh, been afraid of this. We're keeping one out in the backyard. You mind if I take a look at it, sir? Well, no. no. It's uh, right around this way. <laughs> sure he is. He is making a, quite a bit of noise, isn't he? Sure, he's hungry. There's no food, no water. When was the last time he was fed? I don't know, officer. My son is supposed to be taken care of. Yeah, he's a fine-looking tourist. 
I used to raise those when I was a kid in the 4-H club back in Missouri. Oh? Hi, Dad. Get arrested? What's going on here? Is the joint raided? No, but it looks like we have a genuine public nuisance on our hands. Chip, when was the last time he was fed? At the big party. This afternoon. He had lots of good junk. Like what? Six or seven jelly beans and a chocolate bar with nuts and four or five raisins. <laughs> four or five. Huh? Hi, Dad. Hello? Hello, officer. What's happening? Where have you been all day long? Hank and I were over at Betty's working on a feed deal. What time did you go to Betty's? He left before the pig party. It started at 2 o'clock. Then you've been gone over seven hours. I'm sorry, officer. This won't happen again. Well, you'll have to keep him quiet or get rid of him. There's no law against pigs, but I'm sure you understand. I understand. Good night. Good night, officer. It's the hamster story all over again. I still say a couple of them got lost and are having kids in our attic. Come on, Chip, let's get out of here. I think your dad wants to have a few words with Robbie. I shouldn't have let Hank and Betty talk me into that barbecued steak, huh? Rob, I think maybe you'd better take the pig back tomorrow. It won't happen again, Dad, honest. He's going to eat a lot of food. And food costs money. Now, how do you plan it? Well, Hank and I will work. We'll support Hamlet until he can support us. He's not a toy, you know. He's an animal. And animals require care. Now, if you aren't old enough to live up to your responsibilities, I'm going to have to start treating you like I do Chip. I'll start on it first thing in the morning, Dad. You'll start right now. There must be something in the house he can eat tonight. Maybe some canned corn or some milk or some bread. You, you stay with him, though, until you're sure he's not hungry anymore. Okay. Sorry, dinner's so late tonight, Hamlet. How about some milk and some corn and some bread? Sounds pretty good. I might have some myself. Hold, hold, hold. You know, Robbie, I'm losing more fat than Hamlet's gaining. And I can't afford it. <laughs> Look, I promised my dad would stick to it, no matter what. Now, come on. Saw. <laughs> Betty invited me over for the afternoon, and, well, I'm going to go. How about Hamlet? Yeah, how about Hamlet? Look, Rob, uh, how'd you like to buy out my share? You're kidding. Well, Hank, we're in the home stretch. Yeah, I know, but, but I'm beat. This pig's wearing me out. Look, you let me out of the deal now, and uh, when you sell him, you give me my share. Well, how do we know how much is your share? Well, I'll leave that to you. I mean, you may be a lot of things, Rob, but you're no crook. <laughs> well, Hank, are you sure you want out? Boy, am I sure. Well, so long, Hamlet. See you, Rob. As of right now, your name is Hamlet Douglas. <laughs> he sure is a giant. Boy, I bet you if he had horns, he could beat up a rhinoceros. Can he sit up yet? No, he wants to, but my dad said he can't, on account of his center of gravity's in the wrong place. Hey, you guys, don't make him nervous. We were. We were just saying nice things about him. <laughs> How much does he weigh now, Robbie? Well, I don't know for sure. But I'd say for a Duroc, he's getting pretty close to market weight. What's that mean? Well, it, it means he has about 20 pounds of ham on him and 500 strips of bacon, and I'd say uh, maybe 50 pork chops and a whole lot of sausages. What's he talking about? I don't know. What are you talking about? Well, I, I mean, it's about time that I sell him and get my money back. You mean they're going to make Hamlet into bacon and pork chops and stuff? Well, yeah. Where do you think that stuff comes from? I mean, uh, they don't have bacon bushes and pork chop trees, you know. 
Why can't we just keep them? Well, uh, well because we can't, that's all. Well, that isn't the reason I fattened them up. And quit looking at me like that. You know something, Chip? You got a brother that's a cannibal. <laughs> Dad, we got trouble. Trouble? What kind of trouble? Man? Chip is moving out. <laughs> moving out? Moving out of where? Out of the house, I guess. He won't stay under the same roof with Robbie. Oh, oh he didn't say it exactly that way, but that's what he means. I thought he was kind of down tonight. I thought maybe he had another fight with Sunky or something. Dad, you better do something about that goofy kid. I was minding my own business today, and all of a sudden he came up right behind me and hit me over the head with a book. <laughs> What's the matter with him? It's about that pig, Dad. Dad, I think you ought to belt him one. Well, Chip, uh, what are you doing? Now run away, Dad. I'm just moving to the attic. Uh, Dad, tell them that brothers aren't supposed to go around hitting other brothers on top of the head with books while they're studying. All right, my Chip. I'd like an explanation of all this. I'm waiting, Chip. Well, Robbie's gonna sell Hamlet and they're gonna make him into bacon. Oh. Will you quit being such a little baby? Robbie. Well, I'd like to keep Hamlet too, but life is full of all kind of raw deals and you just gotta get used to it. Besides, I'm in partners with George Van Busick and Hank. What do you want me to do? Go run into him and tell him my little kid brother wants to keep a pig for a pet? Yeah, well, I'd rather have him than you. Would you fellas uh, leave us alone? Hmm? But Daddy's been just bugging me. Just go out and shut the door. Sit down, Chip. Chip, I guess in a way this is my fault. I, I should have told you why Robbie wanted to raise the pig. Chip, certain animals are put on this earth to, well, to sustain others. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the way it was meant to be. Yeah. Mm. Sure's a raw deal. This ordinary-looking bed is... Phone monitoring helps protect more Americans than any other security company from burglary, fire, flood, even carbon monoxide. Call now and get the ADT burglary system installed from $99, plus up to 20% off your basic homeowner's insurance. Get the power of ADT. Well, the family... Pasta anytime. New from Classico. That sure has been in there long enough time. How would you like to have to explain it to Chip? Yeah. Boy, being our father sure has some awful things connected with it. I think the excitement's over for tonight, and I'm gonna hit the sack. Good night. Good night, Mike. Hey, Mike. Did you catch on, Dad? Well, he's not too happy about it, Rob, but I guess he understands. I think it's safe for you to go back in there. Good night. Uh, Dad, do you suppose it'd be okay that we, uh, that we might keep Hamlet around here? Sort of like Tramp? Well, you know better than that, Rob. Hamlet had his destiny right from the start. You're old enough to understand that. Yeah, but I'm not old enough to like it. Neither am I, Rob. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Best looking city pig I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I tried to take good care of him. Boy, he's really a beaut. Uh, uh, George? Yeah? Uh, do you think that maybe there's some place on your farm where you could uh, keep Hamlet? I mean, uh, suppose I gave up my percentage. Well, then, uh, do you think you could just, well, keep him? What for? Well, maybe you could show him off because he's a city pig. <laughs> that doesn't make much sense. Yeah, I know. I'm really proud of you, Robbie. Hey, I tell you what we're gonna do with your pig. We'll enter him in a swine show. Swine show?
that long and dedicated effort on the part of the youth performers of our state's boys club. Third prize ribbon goes to Queen Chelsea's Thurs, raised by Harry Jennings of South Acre Farms. Harry, that's a real good looking hefty you got there. That's a, that's a good one. Second prize ribbon, Mr. Magnificent, owned by Ralph Harrington of Marcellus Meadows. That's a good looking chest of watch you got there, Ralph. Congratulations. Congratulate you, Ben. You brought in a real bad. Don't feel bad, Emma. We did our best, and that's what counts. in the history of the swine show, we have a Duroc raised in the city. <laughs> By this young man right here, Robert Douglas. Now, Mr. George Van Busick told us all the trouble he went through and how he dug ditches for money to buy corn. And not to mention the hundreds of cartons of skim milk he purchased at the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> but the committee decided to present a special award to Robert Douglas for raising a pig the hard way. Does that mean that we'll make Hamlet the bacon? Sure, a prize pig like Hamlet could get married and live to a ripe old age. I 
figured he had something else to do, Chip. Must have been important. Yeah. I think her name was Eleanor. Well, let's go. Hmm? Hey, Buck, Dad. Yes. What do you think of this? How's that? Or maybe like this, with this down in front here. Or maybe down to the side, tilted like that. <laughs> maybe all the way down. <laughs> Pretty good. I guess the guys are just giving me the horse laugh. Not just the guys, me. Man, why wasn't I born older? Oh, that's why you're wearing my hat. You think it uh, might make you look older, hmm? Well, I knew it didn't, but I was kind of hoping. Who's uh, making you feel too young? Oh, Ingrid Smith. She's a girl. Thank you. Uh, how much older is Ingrid than you are? She's just my age. And that makes you too young? Well, you know how girls are, Dad. Well, I'm learning. All girls go for older guys. But well, once Ingrid had a date with a guy that was 20. Oh. <laughs> Rob, are you sure you can cope with all this sophistication? Oh, heck yeah, Dad. I, I've just got to figure out a way to make her think I'm older. Well, look, is uh, Ingrid in the same class as you are at school? Yeah. Well, then she knows you're at least as old as she is. Well, but how does she know I didn't flunk two or three years? Well, you've got a point there. <laughs> Apparently, Ingrid doesn't care how stupid they are as long as they're older than she is. Maybe he ought to introduce her to me. Hi, Bill. Hi, Pat. Hi, Dad. Hello, Mike. Chip and I were looking for you today. Oh? We were out at the air base. Oh, well, uh, I'm not scheduled to be there till next weekend. No. Your uh, squadron was on some sort of special maneuver. Oh, yeah, uh, they had an exercise. Our squadron has a pretty sharp operation, huh? Well, apparently they weren't too sharp today, Mike. They had a mechanical abort. Sergeant McCollum said it's the first one they've had in 85 missions. A mechanical failure? Yeah. Wow. I bet McCollum was really steaming, huh? Well, he wasn't uh, too happy about it. You, uh, talked to him, huh? Yes, I was asking him about you. Gee, we were really proud of that record. Regulars never topped it. You, uh, were tied up today, hmm? No. No, I was just goofing around with the guys. Did McCollum say I should have been there? No, as a matter of fact, he was very complimentary. He was telling me how much he depended on you. Well, Dad, this, this thing today was, was optional. I mean, it wasn't anything I had to do. Mike, you don't have to defend yourself. The sergeant told me the men who were there had volunteered. And you wondered why I didn't volunteer, too. I, uh, really hadn't thought too much about it, Mike. Well, anyway, how many guys were working with him? I think there were four. Okay, so I'm the only one of the crew who wasn't there. Does that make it some sort of a crime or something? No, of course not. As I said, the sergeant didn't... Since I've been in the reserves, you know how many of these volunteer things I've missed? One. Exactly one. Well, that's a very good record, Mike. Everybody's got a right to goof off once in a while. Other guys do it, and nobody makes a federal case out of it. Besides, one guy doesn't make that much difference anyway. So I wasn't there, and the squadron just happened to have its first mechanical abort in 85 missions. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly isn't fair to blame me. Sure, I'm sorry about last week, Sarge. Last week? Yeah, the mechanical abort. Oh, yeah. We had a problem with that fuel mixer control valve. We're not going to make that mistake again. Letterman here is going to be personally responsible, right? Right, Sarge. But, uh, I've been checking the carburation system, Sarge. There's no reason you should be stuck with so much responsibility. That's right. I'm going to spread it around a little more. It's no good to lean too heavily on one guy. Hey, here. Let me give you a hand with it. Don't forget those plugs. I don't know why I didn't show up for that exercise. Tell Douglas your dad seems to be a right guy. And that kid brother of yours, <laughs> I bet he's a real pistol. Yeah. Hey, you guys want some help? That's all right. It would have been different if I had something really important to do. 
Look, I don't blame you guys for being sore at me. Who's sore? Why should we be sore at you? We're the ones that goof. Yeah, but at least you were here trying. Uh, I think we all learned a lot from that mistake. Well, we'll see how much you've learned when we have that next special maneuver. When will that be, Sarge? That's in two weeks, Saturday and Sunday, the 23rd and 24th. Well, you can count on me. Hmm? I'm volunteering for the 23rd and 24th. Now, you want to wait later to make up your mind in case... My mind is made up. Now, if something else comes up that you'd rather do... Nothing's going to come up, Sergeant. I'm going to be here. I want to be here. And nothing or nobody's going to keep me from being here, okay? Okay. I get up there, Douglas, and check out the collaboration system. Yes, sir. Save you 15% or more on car insurance. Save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hear what packed on phonics. A chunky is so much for a ram. Hi, Mike. Hi, Bert. Uh, give me five of your largest gallons. Right. <laughs> Say, I was just talking with somebody about you. Eh, yeah, who's that? Melissa Cartwright. Oh, you're giving me the business. No, she comes in here all the time. She knows I'm a friend of yours, and I think she is going to invite you to the Junior Guild Ball. Did she say that? Well, she didn't come right out and say it. But the way she was talking, I bet that's what it is. Oh, boy, Melissa Cartwright can have her choice of any guy on campus. Why me? Well, the girl has one big fault. No taste. I've been dying to ask her for a date. I kept chickening out. Check the oil? Never use it. Hey! What do you know about that? This really is your lucky day. Look. What's the green star for? Just came up on the cash register. That means you win two free baseball tickets to the next home game. Should be a great one. Here. Hey, how about that? All this and Melissa Cartwright, too. Well, thanks a lot, Bert. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mike. How are things out at the base? Oh, fine. Everything's all squared away. I've already volunteered for the next special maneuver. Well, good for you. Yeah, this one's a two-day exercise, the 23rd and 24th. Mm -hmm. How's everything else going? Oh, couldn't be better. The best-looking girl in school's on my trail, and I just won two tickets to the next home game. Well, lucky you. They ought to be playing for first place about then, huh? Yeah, and get a load of these seats. Hey, how about that? Oh, no. What's the matter? The game's on the 23rd. I'll be out at the base on that maneuver. Oh, that's uh, too bad, Mike. Well, first things first. Here, you may as well use them. Well, you're sure you... Oh, it's going to take more than a baseball game to make me miss another maneuver. Well, you know, it's very satisfying to raise a boy to have a conscience and have it finally pay off in baseball tickets. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mike. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Well, what kills me is that you thought I was. And there we were, two unapproachable people. Nobody approaching. Yeah. You've got a terrific sense of humor. Thank you. You're really easy to talk to. And you're not afraid to be serious about serious things, like so many boys. Mike, I'd like you to go to the Junior Deal Ball with me. I'd like to, very much. Is that the 23rd? That's right. Why? Nothing. 
See ya. minute we put in on it. When are you going to show the world? You and I, buddy, at the Deepwater Regional Drag, the 23rd and the 24th. I thought we'd zoom down there Saturday morning early. Wing it. Those guys at Deepwater will see nothing but our taillight. Right. Well, I got to go now. I'll see you later, okay? Okay, so long. Thanks for the ride. Sure. Oh, wait a minute. 23rd and 24th? I won't be able to go to Deepwater with you. Why not? Oh, I got a special air reserve maneuver that weekend. Well, can't you get out of it? I'd like to, but I've already signed up. I was really counting on you, Mike. You're the only one I trust to handle her. Is this maneuver out there really that important? I don't know. I guess so. See, I'm sure sorry. Well, if you change your mind, let me know, will you? Yeah. So long. I'll see you. Drive carefully. Hello, Sergeant McCollum speaking. Uh, Sergeant McCollum, this is Mike. Airman Third Class Douglas. Yeah? Douglas, what's on your mind? Sergeant, you know that special maneuver I volunteered for? What's the matter? Something come up? Well, I, I just wanted to check and make sure I had the dates right. It's Saturday and Sunday, the 23rd and the 24th. Mm. Uh, I, I suppose uh, some of the guys aren't going to make it. No, we've got a full crew and we've got a big job to do, Douglas. Oh. Well, uh... Thanks, Sergeant. Okay. We'll see you Saturday. Episodes thought to be lost forever... 1552-1555. Call now. Well, the family... It's pasta anytime. New from Classico. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mike. You, uh, looking for something? Yeah, I've lost my pipe again. I could have sworn I left it right here on my Robbie drawing table. It. Robbie has it. Yeah, well, don't worry. He's not smoking it. He's talking to some girl on the phone. He says if he puts it between his teeth, he sounds older. He must be talking to Ingrid. Dad, uh, you going to be at the base next week? Yeah, I'm going to be out there on Saturday. Have a meeting on a new Air Force project. Why? Well, I just wondered. Want me to stop by and see how efficient the squadron is uh, when Airman 3rd Class Douglas is on duty? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I might not be there. You won't be there. I thought you volunteered. Well, I did, but... Uh, Something came up, huh? Something. I gave up two free tickets to a great baseball game. I wrote off a chance to drive Archie Greer's new heap at the regional drags at Deepwater. Well, you've had about everything offered to you but the presidency, haven't you? Even my big day with Melissa's on the 23rd. So? Well, it, it isn't as if the safety of the free world depends on whether I go out and work on those beat-up engines. I mean, it's just a routine exercise. I'll be going on 50 more just like it. No, I suppose that's true. Of course, you'll probably think I'm a rat if I don't go. Mike, what I think or what Sergeant McCollum or anyone else will think isn't really too important. The important thing is how you'll feel about yourself. You know, it sure was easier when I used to come in here and, and you'd tell me exactly what to do. I know it's tough, Mike, when you finally have to make your own decisions. But believe me, when you come up with the right one, it can be very satisfying. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, thanks, Dad. What does he say? Well, I'm not sure, but he certainly sounds older, doesn't he? So, Ingrid asked me to her party uh, a week from Saturday. Oh, she's having a group of the older folks in, hmm? Uh, yes, I was wondering if I could borrow your pipe. I won't light it, honest, Dad. Yeah, I guess you could run. It does uh, give you a certain maturity. Oh, I'm sure I hope you agree with that. Oh, I'll go along with that. I'm trying to forget how to get something like that. You know, it's amazing what that pipe does for you. 
It not only has given you a certain maturity, it's it's turned you into a brilliant conversationalist. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, 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 mm. Melissa couldn't take me to the Junior Gill Ball last week, so I'm going to take her to the Panhell Hop tonight. Watch your language there, Charlie. Panhellenic Hop. That's better. <laughs> Melissa must be quite a girl, Mike. Oh, she is. And besides, your dad's in the Naval Reserve, so she knows how it is to be a service widow. Mm -hmm. Well, you better not keep her waiting. Oh, I'm waiting for Rob. I promised to give him a lift to Ingrid Smith's party on my way. Well, that's right. Tonight's the night he mingles with the senior citizens, isn't it? He's probably going by a wheelchair. Come on, Rob. I'm coming. He's up there putting gray streaks in his temple. <laughs> She's, uh, she's having a, uh, a booties and a and bonnets party. <laughs> Hank's gonna wear diapers, even. <laughs> what well, heck? A guy can't even do anything around here without his family getting all fractured about it. What kind of a goof-off would a guy be if he didn't go and get into the spirit of junk? Come on, Mike. Nice. Poor Robbie. The pipe and the wrinkles all gone to waste. Are you proud of me? For what, Bob? I know a half a dozen gags about how goofy that guy looks, and I didn't pull a one of them. <laughs> Tell me a couple of them, Bob. I'll use them on him tomorrow. 